episode of Around the Coin. Distracting identity from devices to you. It goes wherever you go. That's still, I guess, not inaccurate, but we're really, I'm not sure of the self-sovereign identity is a thing that some people might say of yesteryear, but is the concept of user-owned data, user-owned credentials is ultimately what is going to allow, however that comes about, for a, a solid uh, digital identity model. And so I'm going to not go down like identity models broadly here, but long story short, the idea of coupling these things basically allows for not having to trust anyone. And and what if we what we really do ultimately is give users the the tools to actually be able to leverage cryptography without without the risk of screwing that up. I wanted to focus on particularly was privacy. You know, I if you kind of work backwards and you assume that, you know, regard regardless of what time horizon crypto does become the dominant payment structure, the lack of privacy to me is kind of a bizarre feature. It's like I don't think most people understand how transparent the system is. The lack of privacy is bad for crime and is bad for national security. And that if we had more privacy, we'd actually prevent a lot of crime that's occurring today. So the most important thing to note is all we see ourselves doing is building bridges into the crypto world. Now, depending on who the end customer is, there may be a different package, a different wrapper that is most appropriate for their customer. So let me give you an example. We don't think anyone wakes up in the morning and wants to buy a Bitcoin ETF or a DeFi index ETF. They wake up and they want to buy Bitcoin or a DeFi index and get some exposure to that space. Liquidity is the money available for trading, right? So if you have asset A and you'd like to swap to asset B, but you would think that you just meet somebody who wants to sell the asset that they have for what you have, but that's rarely the case. You, you, you usually trade against money that has been placed there by another third, like for-profit actor called a liquidity provider. So the liquidity provider will put some of both assets in the market, hoping that people trade against the money that they've made available for trading and then take a fee when they do. And so that's what I meant by liquidity. What got people really excited about, I guess, are two things. On the one side, it is the angle of JavaScript, one of the most widely known programming languages in the world, where we wanted to capture that development target audience. And on the other side, the aspect of side chains, which allows us to scale like a lot, lot more than other, like let's say smart contract platforms like Ethereum.